I swing from tree to tree I beat my chest like all the rest My knuckles drag the ground I walk that walk, talk that talk Make them monkey sounds volunteers here too and um, we love it here you'll you'll see our enthusiasm just as we talk about the experiences that we have had here um, it's a place that nowhere else in the world are you able to communicate with non-human primates and they actually do communicate just for a real quick story I was walking in in the area right there and Kanzi kept pointing to the keyboard and so I held the keyboard way up to the cage, and he wants a popsicle today. So if, if he works really hard, he'll probably get a popsicle today. Um, and they have very, very good hearing. So we don't say their treats too loud, because then you'll hear it from the whole group. He's looking at you right now. Is he? <laughs> yeah, he probably knows I'm talking about it. Yeah, that's what you want, don't you? Huh? 
Yeah. He understands, uh, he understands about four to 6,000 words, spoken words. So they are extremely intelligent animals, as well as we'll talk about the lexigram board, too. Just a few little housekeeping things. I know everybody's excited to take pictures and um, see them. And we, we consider this their home and that we're the visitors in their home. So we ask that you refrain from um, taking pictures until <coughs> after they've um, demonstrated some of the things up here. And then we always ask them if it's okay to take their pictures. And usually, they're very good about it. They usually just sit up there and just <laughs> like, okay, now you can take my picture. So um, that's one of the things that we're, we would like to. And then also we ask that you stay back a little bit, about two feet. Um, sometimes he'll ask the kids to come up closer, and that's fine. Um, he loves kids. So the kids can sometimes come up and kneel on the floor. Uh, he's a little bit leery, more leery with adults. He'd rather have the females up here than the males, to be honest with you. So uh, he might even ask one of the uh, women to come up closer, too. But um, we just kind of do what they want us to do. Um, we never force them to come into the observation room, or we never force them to do anything. If they don't want to come, they just don't come, you know. So it's all on bonobo time, and we kind of laugh about that. Food, feeding, whatever is on bonobo time. If they're hungry, they'll be very vocal and tell us that they want their food, or they just um, we kind of run bonobo time. Um, just a little bit of a history about the bonobos. Sorry. Yeah. No, okay. I'll um, take the back. That's Lori, another volunteer. We run on volunteers around here, if you haven't Thank noticed. You for <laughs> Um, a history of the bonobos, um, they became a distinct species in 1999. They were um, considered pygmy chimpanzees before that, and they did scientific studies, and they have their own um, species now. So they're called, pig, or they're called bonobos. Um, bonobos and chimps are our closest relative, living relative. We share about 98 to 99% of the same DNA as do humans. So um, actually, bonobos and chimpanzees are closer to us than they are to orangutans or gorillas. So their DNA is extremely close to ours. Um, they um, differ from chimpanzees in that they have a black face and they have pink lips. So when you notice them, they'll, you can see the, the pink lips and the dark face. Their ears are very small and set back in their head. Uh, chimpanzees have a white face, a much lighter face, and much bigger ears. Um, bonobos are known to be more peaceful, or the most peaceful of the um, ape family. And um, chimpanzees louder, more violent than the um, bonobos. The, um, the females in the bonobo society rule. So um, the females tell the males what to do, and the males listen, <laughs> and they do it. <laughs> they do it. Um, they, they tell them what to eat sometimes, and what they want to eat, and what they want, what, uh, what they should, what the males should be doing, and don't you think most of the time they follow the females' yeah. directions? Yeah. Sometimes they even throw water or spit water on us, and that's by the director of a female, you know, we're walking through or something. Um, we, uh, we always, when we walk through their area, we always talk to them and tell them what we're doing so that they're not afraid or that they know what we're doing. We might be walking through their area and they'll say, Good morning, we're just going to go to the kitchen and make breakfast, or, you know, what would you like for breakfast today, or just kind of talk to them so that they know as we're walking through that just to be polite, I guess, to just to tell them what we're doing. Um, let's see. There are only 130 bonobos in captivity in the world. 
So there are very um, endangered species. There are less than, they figure less, the estimates are between four and 20,000 bonobos left in the wild. And they are only found in the Congo, uh, the Republic of Congo. And one of the reasons that their population is dwindling, unfortunately, is um, humans, you know, the, and the, their area is getting smaller and smaller by the deforestation and those kinds of things. And they also are um, still used as bush meat, so people still in the Congo do eat them. So um, hopefully the reason we don't know quite if there's 4,000 or 20,000 is they're very difficult to study and there's been a lot of unrest in the Congo. So there's not a lot of, there is a sanctuary there, but there's not a lot of um, opportunities for scientists to actually go out and follow them and live with them for you know years and find out the, the population, the exact population. In the United States, there are 70 bonobos in captivity. And we are lucky that we have six of the 70 bonobos. So we have about 10% of the bonobos that are in the United States right here. And they're as a family unit. And some of the, uh, we'll kind of talk about um, their names and how they're related to each other. Does anybody have questions right now? How many males, how many females? We have four males and two females. And, um, we are not sanctioned as a breeding center. Hopefully that will be sometime we will have that happen, but um, so we're unable to have any more at this particular time. We would like to have another little one, but yeah. How did you go about acquiring these six? Did you start with six? Did you have they, um, Dr. Sue Rumba, our scientist, and Liz Pugh, they are sisters, and they have worked at the University of Georgia since uh, Dr. Sue did her um, doctorate years ago down there. And so they've worked literally their whole adult life with these bonobos and this particular family. Um, Ted Townsend of Townsend Engineering had a vision of bringing these world-class animals here. And so he developed this, built, started building it. It actually opened in 2004. And he funded it for until 2008. And then it, the economy took a dive, and we had a flood <coughs> here, and so Mr. Townsend withdrew his financial backing of this. So we are struggling financially. We're, you know, working very hard to keep these bonobos here and in a family unit. Um, if we would have to, if we would have to leave, they'd have to go to different zoos because there's probably no one that would take all six as a family unit like this. So luckily we got our exhibitor's license and so we're able to offer tours. For those of you who've been around Des Moines, you know that it hadn't been open to the public. It was very hard to get in before. So now um, we're thrilled to be able to show you guys these wonderful creatures. <laughs> um, I think I'll talk a little bit about each of them. And if you guys want to pop in too, you can. Um, we'll start with our female Matata. And Matata is, um, was the only one that was wild caught. She was actually um, brought from the Congo when she was an infant, or a, about four years old, they figure. And um, so she is the one that teaches the rest of the bonobos the way of the wild, the way of the, the forest. <laughs> Um, she would teach them more to hunt. She's a hunter and, and a gatherer, so she teaches the rest of them the way of the wild, because all the rest of them have been born in captivity and raised with humans and bonobos also. She is the mother to Maisha and Alikia, and she's the adopted mother of Kanzi, or the one that you can see here. Um, when Kanzi was little, Kanzi's mother um, actually didn't really take care of her, and Matata just kind of came in and stole Kanzi. And Kanzi's mother just let her, and so um, Matata has raised Kanzi as a son. So they, 
they are, we consider them um, mother and son, even though she's not the biological mother of Kanzi. Um, she understands uh, the vocal words, not as much as the others, but she does understand. As we walk through, you know, we're always talking to them. We have um, always telling them what we're doing. Kanzi is 33 years old. He just had a birthday, and um, he is the most famous of all of them. He uh, has appeared on with Lisa Ling on the Oprah Winfrey Show. He has done activities with Anderson Cooper. Anderson Cooper dressed up as a bunny rabbit one time. Um, he has been interviewed. Um, he's going to be in the BBC uh, series Primate, Planet Primate. They're just developing a new series. They were The BBC was here to film um, Kanzi and I don't, I don't know who else you, I think it's mostly Kanzi. Mostly yeah. Kanzi, um, Pico a bit and, and Yoda. And Yoda, yeah. Well, Kanzi, didn't Kanzi play music with Peter Gabriel? Yes. yes. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, um, he recording with Kanzi. Yeah. <laughs> he has, um, he can strike a match, build a fire, he can collect the sticks, put the sticks in a, in a, pit and he can strike a match or use a lighter and light a fire. He'll find a stick for roasting marshmallows and he'll roast his own marshmallow and eat it. Um, then he'll take the, put the water out, put the, you know, open the bottle of water and put it out and let the fire go out. Um, he also has the ability to like blow up a balloon, which Dr. Sue, you have, a, you have to control your breath in order to keep blowing up the balloon and that was one of the things that she discovered about them that they actually have that ability to control their their breath. Um, he um, is very talented on the keyboard and we'll talk about the lexagram and the keyboard. They estimate he knows between four and six thousand vocal words as well as 460 words on the keyboard that he can go and punch any time. Um, he loves visitors, as I said earlier. He loves kids. He likes to have kids play chase back and forth. So hopefully some of you will be willing to play chase if he wants to play chase. Some <laughs> adults sometimes think it's funny they us chase one another. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. and we do whatever they ask. <laughs> Pretty much whatever <laughs> they <laughs> ask. <laughs> um, Alekia is also the daughter of Matata, our matriarch. And Alekia is 16 years old. And she is the mother of Tico, which is our three-year-old. Uh, we do have a young one here. Uh, so we have a three-year-old here. Um, so she's the mother of Tico. She understands the keyboard and knows what it means and knows that she needs to communicate with the keyboard, but she doesn't always want to do it. She's, she's kind of bossy. She's real bossy, as a matter of fact. She. Uh, is a girl. She's what? She's a teenage girl. Yes, she is a teenage girl, and she definitely wants to be in charge of the boys. Especially my brother. <laughs> Her brother, yeah. She will tell them what to do, and she uh, loves to be center of attention. And if there's a really loud noise, you probably think that Alikia is in the middle of it somewhere. She's talking and telling them something. Um, then we have uh, Maisha, and Maisha is 13 years old, and Alikia and Maisha are brother and sister, so there again, Matata is the mother of Alikia and um, Maisha. And um, he, we consider him the jokester of the group. He's just the funniest guy, and he'll smile at you. Every time you go by his cage, he'll jump on it, and he'll give you this big smile. They can't laugh. Like we laugh, but they can go <laughs> like that, and you know that that's their smile and that's their laugh. <laughs> and um, he shakes his shoulders and he'll jump up on the on the on the cage and he'll twirl around and the, he'll start with his head up here and he'll end up with his head down here and he's flipping around and doing somersaults and he's really fun to watch. We uh, those of us who work in the kitchen or we all work in the kitchen at times. Um, we have a window right there, and so he loves to watch us 
see what we're preparing. And then he always does, you know, he might spin on his back around and around and around when we're doing the, um, making the food. And we'll, we'll show him, we'll say, you know, we're going to make uh, tuna salmon, or I don't know, egg salad sandwiches today. And he'll shake his head, but yeah, that'd be a good thing no to matter, do. <laughs> no matter what you said, he could say, he shakes his head. Yeah, he I likes mean, it. He likes 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 it. To put it in a bag, he'll sit there and thump the glass. Yeah. <laughs> mine, I got reminded at breakfast one time when I cut up pineapple and I forgot to put it in the bag, and I start feeding the bags, pushing them into the cooler, I was like, thump, thump. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I forgot the pineapple, sorry. <laughs> They, they are really, they all have their own personalities, definitely have their own personalities. And Maisha um, is not used, is not being trained to use the keyboard right now. He's one of the control groups, but um, verbally he understands so much of the, of the uh, verbal language. Um, and Yoda, Yoda is 17 years old, and we call him the handsome man. He is just a perfect specimen of what you would think a bonobo should be. He's thin and he's lean and he's he's just attractive. He's just a cute guy and he loves to give kisses to everybody. Um, so he'll if he, if he comes in, I don't know if he'll be in today, but he'll put his lips up and he'll ready to kiss you and so. Only to girls. I was just going to say, if it's, if it's a guy, he'll hit the glass. Yeah. I was going to say, so if you're a girl and you can go up and you can kiss him, and then he'll he'll kind of look at a boy, you know, or a man, and he'll say, come on. So a man will go up there and he'll just slam the glass. You know? so, and then of course we all laugh, and so then he thinks that's even funnier, and he wants to do it more, you know. So, um, but. He's, um, he's really a fun, and I hope you get to see him, at least see him, because he is just, he's so thin and he's so well developed and he's just, um, he's a cool kid. Um, Tico is our three-year-old and he was, uh, his father is Kanzi and his mother is Alikia and he was actually a mistake here, so we, we, I told you we don't have breeding license here, but he was a mistake. <laughs> and so we have a wonderful three-year-old that um, was a, a, it's fun to have him. Um, he is a typical three-year-old also. He gets into mischief. He, he is just everywhere. When you have him somewhere, he's climbing and he's, he's just everywhere. And um, so we do, he was actually raised biculturally. Um, Dr. Sue had really just cared for him as you would a human infant for most of his first couple of years, actually. Um, and we still do care for him as a human also. Um, we let him in with the bonobos now much more, so he's learning the way of the bonobos as well as the way of humans so that he um, <coughs> knows how to work in the Congo or in the forest or with the other bonobos and live with them. We never have, um, I think there are some pictures that you can go online and you can see when he was very, very little, he did wear a diaper, but we don't dress them like that, you know. They are, they're animals and they're, they're not, we're not making them to be human as far as that's concerned. Um, uh, the, Tico is well accepted by everyone in the group. Um, so that if he is in with the women, he's taken care of with the, by the women. If he's with Neota, who's 16 years old, he's taken care of by Neota. Um, you can see when you see if Tico comes in, he has a little white stripe on where he would have a tail. And as long as that white stripe is there, Everybody is pretty nice to him. Um, they're kind, they let him jump all over him and crawl all over him and they kind of have more patience. But uh, the older he gets and that white stripe disappears, then he needs to be more like an, a teenager. You know, he's treated not quite as kindly by the others, um, but as long as he has that white stripe, he's, he's treated pretty well by everybody else. Um, anything else about the, about the Guy, the six guys, do you know? Do you have anything else you want to add? Um, Tito was raised more with humans because when he was a baby, he could not grip on to Elikia, his mother, with his hands because he just couldn't. 
And in the wild, if that had happened, the baby would have died. And so Elikia, being a young mother, didn't really know what to do with him, so she just sent him to to call some uh, bonobos. Yeah, bonobos. And um, either pronunciation is correct. Um, I, I just say bonobos. Uh, um, so either pronunciation is correct um, for that. Uh, talk just a minute, um, and then we're going to walk down the hall a little bit and um, see the building so you can kind of see the differences in the building. But our daily routine, I always thought it was kind of fun in that what do you do all day long, you know? And so um, they have breakfast, lunch, and dinner, just like we do. And uh, for breakfast, normally, we do um, fruit, just a bag full of fruit. We put all their food in Ziploc bags, gallon-sized Ziploc bags, and so we make up all their bags for them. And we have, um, oh, they like almost any kind of fruit. Sometimes we make scrambled eggs for them, um, we've made pancakes for them, um, but more often than not, it's just a nice bag full of fruit. Lunches are usually um, vegetables, lettuce, eat a lot of lettuce, celery. Conti is on a diet, so he's a little heavy. <laughs> so he knows that um, he can eat all the celery he wants, and sometimes he asks for celery. However, today he would eat that. So, um, but usually lunch is just um, vegetables and lettuce. Uh -huh. On the keyboard, um, on the keyboard there's a thing for some of Is there a reason that, um, do you have any male staff when they have a negative response to ma males versus females? Interesting, we do have a male, we do have a male, what? We do have a male staff. Yeah, we do have a male staff, but, um, I don't know. I don't know. You know. Yeah. And in the past, we don't know. You know. We're yeah. Just yeah. That's a good question. That's a good question. lived up to 60 years old. But we feel in the forest, probably if they're in their 20s, that's a long time when they're living in the Congo. So we have one Matata here is um, about 45. So she's, we figure she's around 45 or so. Good question, but we don't really know in the, in the wild how long they can live. Um, our, uh -huh. We have keyboards all over now. I don't see any keyboards. They're always they're all they're in the um, 
in their cages all the time, in their areas all the time. hy the grocery stores donate food Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to us. And if we hadn't had hy V, we certainly wouldn't be standing here today telling you about them because without hy V, um, we just wouldn't have been able to afford. Um, so they do, they give us protein, or uh, vegetables and um, the things that can't be on the shelf any longer, but are certainly still good to eat. We, we would not give them anything that we wouldn't eat ourselves, you know, so, um, but all of those, a lot of those packages have a date, you know, sell by such and such, and so, um, Heidi, we pick up maybe six, five to seven boxes of food, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from three different Heidi stores in the morning, so. <laughs> they were, they were really yes, and then AE Dairy supplies us with low-fat yogurt, low-fat milk, and orange, um, juice. orange juice. So with those two businesses have really stepped up and have helped us immensely. So are they vegetarians? Uh, good question. Are they vegetarians? Uh, no, they do eat meat. We don't give them a lot of meat. However, Neoda, the handsome man, has become a self-proclaimed um, vegetarian. If we sometimes give them a salad, and from Heidi, you know, they have the uh, chef salads and things. If we don't get all the meat out in the Otis, he'll leave the meat out. <laughs> he'll he'll, he'll give Lincoln an egg white, but that's about as far as it's going to go. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So they're. Uh -huh. They ever get mad with you? Do they ever get mad? Yeah, they get mad. They I get mad. Kanzi could bark at you. Yep. Kanzi, I went back to give him. I was giving him food, as a matter of fact, <coughs> and he threw some bark at me the last time, a couple tours ago, picked up a handful of bark and just threw it at me. Well, Liz was very upset with him for doing that, and so she was over here talking to him when he, and was scolding him, very sternly scolding him, and he just put both of his arms around her and put his head down on her shoulder, it was like, Oh my gosh, <laughs> it was just so. <laughs> but along the lines of the photographs, did they get mad? Is one of the volunteers was in the back, getting ready to stop the cleaning, and Aliki was being adorable, and so she started taking pictures of Aliki up, had her camera with her, and then had taken a couple, and then all of a sudden thought, oh, I didn't ask, and said, well, Aliki, surely you don't mind that I'm taking your picture. Well, Aliki had juice at that moment, and that bottle of juice went wild. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> so, oh, apparently you do mine. <laughs> <laughs> we try and provide enrichment for them every day, something different. They build with blocks. They paint. Our, the paintings down the wall are for sale. Um, they paint um, do, as we're walking down there later. Um, do music. We hide food outside for them so that they can actually have their hunting skills and, and have some food outside. And um, uh, we do show movies. They love movies, and they, they particularly like animal movies, of course. But Chico loves Elmo. Loves yeah, Elmo is <laughs> Chico's favorite movie. And you can, we, that's pretty much their nighttime uh, routine. They go to bed with a, a video playing, and the, it just calms them down, and they'll just watch the video. Um, they build a nest every day, uh, so we have lots of blankets. We wash hundreds of loads of clothes a day, it seems, just blankets, and every night they make a new nest. They like to nest up high. In the trees, they, in the Congo, they would have broken off branches and made a new nest every night. So we give them clean blankets every night. So if you guys ever have sheets or blankets, don't give them to Goodwill. <laughs> Bring them up here to us, because we use them all the time. And they, um, they'll just make a little nest. So you'll go up and you'll clean the cage the next day, and. There'll be a big round nest with all the blankets. When it gets cold, they cover up. They'll just you'll just see a lump there, and they'll cover up with this. Um, we always need new ones. Is Tata likes to shred hers, and she'll actually like weave kind of layers like yeah. together, and it's kind of neat when you pull them out. <laughs> the way they're woven together to form just exactly the shape she wants. But once they get shredded so much, we can't use them anymore because we just have these strips of fabric that we're pulling out of the dryer. Room. Okay, and they all have water fountains in their. Um, they all have water fountains in their areas, so that they can always they always have the availability of water. Um, so and that's. The ability to shower us as we walk by. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's my nature. Our little our jokester. He likes to do that. And, you know, he knows you're coming, which he does because we say hi, Manisha. I'm heading back to the kitchen. 
he makes a beeline for the water bout, builds his mouth, and as soon as you walk by, you're getting sprayed. <laughs> and then he'll, he'll get right up on the fence and, <laughs> and at first, you know, the first couple times it's like, but now it's okay. You know, we don't care. When we come to work, we come to work and we we end up... I feel bad now, I think, if he doesn't spray me. I just feel like, what is that? And then I spray today. Let's talk about... <laughs> <laughs> you want to play with him? Throw! Yeah, she does, yeah. Peter. Do they ever leave the sanctuary that they go anywhere else for research or, no. or anything? And I had another question down there. That was my question. Oh, that was your question too? Okay. They're amazing creatures, as you can tell. Um, and we just hope that we can keep them here as long as we uh, can keep fundraising and keep people being aware of this facility nowhere else. In the we world. Have, we have a Facebook page, Iowa Primate Learning Sanctuary, so if you Facebook, please like us on Facebook. Just the word And tell your friends and fellow workers about us. Um, we do have lunch and learns. You can bring your d department or com company out and have a lunch and learn um, and be able to have a small short tour or short lecture about the bonobos. It's for lots of different people. Uh, we just need the word out that, that we're open to and open for um, tours. You might want to see Kenzie's mother. Batata. She's been watching her out. Okay. Are you going to bring her in here? Yeah, or I just can, I can. I am. Let her come out for a few minutes. I want to see her. She's yeah, would you like Matata to come out? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Matata will, will try and get her out. Matata's as much anymore of a part of the too. And uh, I was in with them for like Kanzi's first six years of life. All, to, all day long with the time. Yeah. Yes. So I spent six years in with her. Have you ever had any other days. kind of apes here? Yeah. Every day in with her. We, um, ha when, the, when the building, when this uh, complex was made, they had orangutans. Oh. And the building, I mean, excuse me. Yeah, orangutans yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, and a, oh. some chimps. Here, um, and, and the orangutans left in 2008. So now, where did the funding come from? Now, are, are you 501c with the board? We are 501c with the board, and um, we are raising money slowly, just tours and occasional um, special events. No, no, Bernie, 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 Bernie. You can't go in every single time. We did a hay rack ride and just, and our donations from Hy-Vee, uh, that's what's keeping us alive. It, it's about a thousand dollars a day to run this place. So um, as far as the, you know, just the facility. So we are, it's good to throw. Sorry. we're definitely in need of uh, large grants. We've applied for several grants and hoping that we'll get some of our grants. Um, we are having some research, looking at some research grants with some scientists coming in. We do uh, coordinate with York University in Toronto, um, um, Canada, and they're doing the vocalizations. They're actually studying our, we send them vocalization um, records or recordings, and then they are taking the vocalizations apart. So we're trying, we hope that we just by spreading the word, you know, just having How many full-time employees do you guys have, have then, actually? Four or three full, well, I don't think all of them are full-time. Maybe maybe two full-time and two part-time employees. And then we have a wonderful staff of about 12 of us who are volunteers. And, um, you know, when you volunteer, you can volunteer to... How many of you have any of you been here before? Before it was open like this? I mean, you know what was. <laughs> I know, that's the secret here, that, you know, and we, our address has changed within the last several months, and so it's very hard to find. That's another thing we need on our web, our updated web, is how to get there and where to get there. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.
not used to coming in and seeing people. Um, she's not one that usually comes in. Leora, the 16-year-old, comes in a lot, um, but she's not used to it. That's Natata. She's talking. She's telling somebody to do. <laughs> I love to see the relationship between Liz and Ponzi because it's true, one of true love and true trusting between the two of them. I mean, she can hold him, she can touch him, she can grab his arm and you know, take him up there, and just the, um, the relationship that they have. But they've been... <laughs> But they've been working together since Liz was 18 and Kaizen was not even born. Right on, after that. Yeah. 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 Sparkler, visitor, visitor sparkler. We couldn't figure out a sparkler. We haven't, don't have a sparkler. Then we looked around and there was this little girl with this sparkly sweater and as long as she came up to the window, that was what he wanted. He had observed enough of the people in the tour. Um, another time there was a lady with a, a, car, a, a brace on her arm and it was visitor hurt. So he knew that there was somebody that had been hurt or was hurt there and was able to uh, tell us that. Um, he has told us what he wants for breakfast and lunch and dinner. He, he, he communicates, they all communicate uh, very well. No, not, not at all. Did you find her? Did you find Liz? Oh, okay. Get some wins. How fast can you run? Oh, you know, I don't know how fast they can run, but they are known to be seven to eight times stronger than a human. So, and they're so, they're so fast. You turn around and they're there. I mean, you just, they're, they move so quickly that sometimes they frighten you when you even when you're walking through they might come from the the high nest and they'll be at the side of the gate just very quickly very very quickly well i think that um if there was a sharp object they could maybe but we don't put things like that in there with them so that you know it's very very strong glass it's stronger than like an automobile glass. It's it's known to be. I think it, it's called gorilla glass. Yeah. And you, tower, dear. They are on the endangered species list also because there's so few of them left. Uh -huh. How tall can they grow to be? Well, they're probably. I think Kanzi's about Liz's size, maybe when he stands all the way up. And he's probably our best one. Can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? We can. Yay. This is Liz, one of our scientists here. She's spent basically her whole life um, working with them and doing the research, helping do the research and doing the research for them. She's very good with the keyboard and wants all of us to continue working with the keyboard with them. So whenever we give them a grade, like if we're working with Tico, if we give them a grade, we, uh, she would like us to point to the grape on the lexigram and then give him the grape. I forgot to talk about the lexigram. Hello, visitors. How are you today? Uh, now, Kanzi can understand everything that you're saying and comprehend pretty much anything that has to do with his environment. He doesn't know as much about 
about the outer world, stuck inside of here, and he can't go anywhere, but he understands pretty much anything you say that has to do with here. And he can use this keyboard to talk with, to so try to communicate some of his thoughts. And we're starting to use them more and more. But uh, originally we didn't have that option. Now we do, so we can find out more that way. He understands pretty much everything I say. He might ignore it. <laughs> about 470 or so symbols and the symbols don't represent like if they say a banana it doesn't look like a banana so they had to figure out what a banana was what the symbol was and be able to put it together they purposely didn't make the symbols to look like the objects so that's another part of their cognitive thinking too or maybe clover Tour. 